In lab 20, students use electrolysis to separate the compound water. Water is made up of two different elements, hydrogen and oxygen. In lab 20.1, you will start by placing an electrode in the plastic container. Make sure that both ends of it are hanging over the side. Add water to the container so that the electrodes have at least one centimeter of water over them. Your teacher will come and add two scoops of sodium sulfate to the water. This will help conduct the electricity. Stir the solution with a plastic spoon. Then, fill one of the test tubes with water from the sodium sulfate solution. Place your thumb over the top, making sure the open end of the tube is below the liquid, and place it over one of the electrodes. The tube must still be full of liquid. Repeat this with the other tube and placing it over the other electrode. Clip the battery wires together, making sure the red wire is connected to the positive terminal and the black wire is connected to the negative terminal. Make sure the two remaining batteries are connected if you are sharing with another group. If you have assembled your apparatus correctly, you should soon start seeing small bubbles coming up from the electrodes. You will notice as the bubbles rise, the water seems to be leaving the test tubes. This is just like our previous lessons when we tested density. Because the gas is less dense than the liquid, it is filling up the test tube and pushing the more dense substance to the bottom and out of the test tube. Did you notice that the negative electrode is filling almost twice as fast as the positive one? Keep that in mind when we discuss the next part. Once you or your teacher have collected enough gas, we need to conduct a test to identify each gas and determine its properties. Make sure you disconnect the battery. Carefully remove the test tubes, and we have done this ahead of time for the purpose of this demonstration. In Table 1, when you test the gas collected from the negative electrode, with the burning splint, you hear a squeaky pop. Please record that information for tube 1 in table 1. In table 1, when I test the gas collected from the positive electrode with the burning splint, you will notice that it burns slightly brighter and continues to burn, but does not make a lot of noise. Please record this information in the table about tube 2. When I test the gas collected from the negative electrode, in tube 3 with a glowing splint, you will notice that the splint goes out. When I test the gas collected from the positive electrode in tube 4 with a glowing splint, you will see the splint relight and then go out. Using the observations in tubes 2 and 4 for the gas produced above the positive electrode, we can tell that it is oxygen because it didn't make a noise but helped the fire to burn. Using the observations in the table about the gas in tubes 1 and 3, you can tell the gas is hydrogen because it was highly reactive and popped but did not help the fire to burn. The two gases in water are hydrogen and oxygen. Based on this, we know that water is a compound because it, made, it is made of two elements. We notice that the ratio for the gases were filling with twice as much hydrogen as oxygen because the formula for water is H2O. This means that there are two hydrogen atoms for every one oxygen atom. The reason the hydrogen was above the negative electrode is because hydrogen is positively charged. As you guys know, opposites attract, so the positively charged hydrogen is attracted to the negatively charged electrode. 
The same is true for oxygen. It is negatively charged, so it is attracted to the positively charged electrode when the electrical current is run through the solution.